I'll say hello everyone to say hello to Victor Ariel from Tikoya. He's an IBM AlphaZone alum, a Shlomo Talibin of Shekel Scales, and Giora Dishon of uh, Utilite. Our moderator is Tal Reshef, uh, Israel-China business specialist, and I'm going to turn the program over to him now. Tal, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Hello, everybody. We are about to start. Uh, I believe many people will be joining us uh, coming from the coffee one by one. Be gentle to them while they enter. Uh, you know, with hospitality. And uh, we have a very fascinating uh, discussion now uh, dealing with the uh, cooperation between Israeli and Chinese uh, people. Now we are not dealing with projects, we are not dealing with providing services. We are dealing with people who have the experience uh, in the area experience in the terrain, people who have been working with China for years. And uh, I will be happy to start with uh, Yo Shlomo. Uh, Yo Shlomo is managing the, the uh, Talitman, uh, uh, the, it's a scales company, and uh, uh, he has a very wide, very long experience, both in, uh, in business-wise and uh, with the technology-wise. Uh, you've been working a lot with Chinese, you've been working a lot with Koreans. If you are talking about the problematics that in Israel he may face once he's entering into China, working with Chinese, uh, why he is not prepared to it? From your experience, what is the best that he should be prepared to? Okay, can you hear me? Okay, first uh, let's elaborate a little bit about check and scales. We are leading uh, scales, weighing systems, and uh, measuring uh, in general a manufacturer all over the world. Um, in general, uh, weighing systems are very wide range, starting from scaling uh, diamonds to trucks, and in the middle there are a lot of uh, other areas. Uh, in the expo side, we are focusing on two main sectors. One is the uh, healthcare side, and the other one is the retail. And we have our uh, headquarters in Israel. We have uh, now a fully owned subsidiary in China in which we manufacture our products and we also started to sell in China. When we, uh, we are quite, let's say, veterans in China, if we can say veterans for six, seven years, but uh, from what I heard all over, it seems that uh, we are quite a long time in China related to others. When we started to, ex uh, to, s to see what's happening in China, to explore the market, we uh, started to do joint ventures with Chinese suppliers, and then we manufactured the, the products here in Israel. After two years, when we happened to know better the market, then we decided to establish our own company, uh, which is a Chinese company, and to start manufacturing China too. Uh, in order to do so, we decided, and uh, it was one of our uh, most important decisions, and I think that you should do the same, uh, we took uh, an Israeli manager for the company, uh, but when we looked for the, this manager, in the end we chose a woman manager. But when we started to look, we decided <coughs> to have someone who has uh, an experience in the Chinese market and also not Chinese. Because if you don't know these two things, it's very difficult to, to go forward. So we found a woman who worked for several years in the Chinese government, and she knows Chinese perfectly, and we hired her as our manager in China. And that was a very good decision, uh, because she knows the mentality, she knows the culture, she knows how to treat uh, the markets. And I can tell you that uh, for example, if you look uh, in China, there are more than 500 uh, manufacturers of scale in China, which are organized in some kinds of institutions for scales, 
and we are the only foreigner who are also member in this uh, institution. And because she's a woman, she's the only woman in this institution, and she knows the only Chinese, everybody adores her, because of course if they adore her, they adore the company too. So uh, I think this was one of our most important uh, decision that was worthwhile for us. Okay, so uh, it is kind of taking a person that will be in the middle, the middleman between the Israeli part that thinks Israeli wise and the Chinese side who thinks Chinese way uh, and you are taking somebody who is going to make the bridge between the two parts and as I understand from what you are saying, uh, it is successful in the end. Um, can you, you said that it was a wise decision to take an Israeli who knows China, what about taking a Chinese who knows the West, who knows Israel? It's also maybe possible, I don't know, because we don't have an experience of that, but uh, I think to focus more on that, we didn't take a technical woman, we, take, we took somebody who knows Chinese and the culture more than in the technical stuff. Okay. Because we knew that we can help the factory to do everything from here, so it was more important to have the knowledge and know-how about the culture and the relations there. Okay, talking about the culture, Victor, if I can uh, turn to you, Victor Ariel is the founder of and CEO of the Koya company, and he has uh, a long experience in Israel. One of the interesting things that he's done uh, in his life is uh, arriving there within the uh, delegation of uh, our Prime Minister, that Prime Minister Olmert, and uh, this is only one of the, of the things that he did there. And uh, with a long experience with uh, East Asia, not only with China, and uh, talking about um, gaps between Israel and China, talking about Chinese culture and Israeli culture, I believe the most interesting point, the most crucial point, is when you're getting into the negotiation. Can you give us some points, some hints about these gaps and about negotiating uh, between those two sides? Um, right, thank you, Dal. Uh, my previous company, uh, we designed cameras for cell phones. And we started in 99, of course, before there were cameras and cell phones. And it's interesting, first of all, how we got uh, uh, to China. My current company is doing something else, but I'll start with the previous one. So uh, we went with this idea of camera and cell phone to the United States. And the American manufacturers told us, hmm, nobody needs camera and cell phone. <laughs> the same thing we heard in Europe. We went to Japan. In Japan, they were much more advanced, and they said, well, your picture quality will never satisfy Japanese market. It will just never be good enough for Japan. So we went to China and Chinese said, oh, this is great, just right. So basically I've been uh, selling microchips, imagers in China since 2003. And I would like to tell a story of my uh, first negotiation in China over the price of the chip. So we had our first customer, we had uh, senior vice president sitting in front of uh, me, myself, and our Chinese rep on the side. And um, basically we start negotiation, we discuss technical details, and at some point, Chinese vice president says, well, what's the price? So I had the prepared answer, I give them the price, 9.90 US dollars, and the discussion continues. No follow-up. So uh, after a few minutes, my rep sitting on the side says, he's not happy with the price, lower the price. I'm looking at the guy, I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so I say, we lower the price by 20 cents. Again, the discussion continues on technical subjects. No response from uh, the vice president. My rep says, lower the price. So we lower the price another 15 cents. And then he's, okay, he's happy. And I cannot tell anything. <laughs> so we had this negotiation, the project succeeded, and um, basically what I learned that uh, in Israel here, we believe in Ten Commandments, agreements, and Chinese are more fluid. They read body language. For them, the actual verbal agreement more important. And if you fail, they'll take advantage of the situation. So to continue the story, uh, a few months later, we were going to mass production. Our American VC said, well, we have to have an American VP of sales. 
So they hired us an American VP of sales who didn't quite understand China, but who came to China and said, I'll show how it's done in America, and I'll teach uh, you guys how you do sales and communications. So he goes to our Chinese customer and says, well, I'm here to improve communications between you Chinese and uh, our development team in Israel. What are your problems in communications? Well, the same, I wasn't at the meeting, but that's how our rep relates the story. He says the Chinese vice president looked at him and said, well, we have a minor communication problem. Your price is too high. <laughs> So the American VP of sales says, no problem, we lower it by a dollar. So right there on the spot, we lost $100,000 in revenue just to improve uh, uh, communications. Yeah. <laughs> and needless to say that that was the last uh, uh, business trip of that uh, VP of sales, but this is how it is. You know, we in Israel believe in agreements, Chinese believe in, in the flow, um, in relationships. So once you build relationships, you know, everything can be solved. Uh, agreements, in my experience at least, they don't remember what's written in the agreement after six, mo six months. Okay, thank you. It's quite uh, interesting what you're saying about the different ways that Americans, Israelis, and Chinese uh, see maybe the same situation. Uh, usually when I'm coming to companies and I'm uh, giving them workshops about uh, doing business with, with China, the main uh, questions that I'm asked is, why do they disappear? I mean, there's the point that the Israeli is getting angry, so he says, this isn't that that gets me angry. The same happens with the American. The Chinese, with something he doesn't like, he simply disappears. And then comes the mystery, what happened and what can I do? So we are dealing with another world of concept, with another world of uh, solutions, with another world of reactions. And uh, you, uh, you too, you have your uh, vast uh, experience with China, something about 30 years, if I recall right. How long have you been working with outside no, or inside my, China? My experience with China is only seven, eight years. 30 okay. years is in a different business, semiconductor business worldwide. Okay. China is not good in semiconductors. So okay, but during those seven, eight years, uh, unlike uh, you, you've been dealing quite a lot also with investments entering into the crucial point of receiving money, which is always a difficulty, uh, no matter where. Can you say something about the way that you have to deal with it with Chinese, uh, unlike with others? Is there a difference in this point? Um, uh, the, the answer is yes. Uh, a little bit on the background, I've been many years, as uh, I mentioned, but many years in semiconductor business and owned a company and, and sold equipment worldwide, including China, but China was never a major market uh, for us. Uh, and a little bit of a twist in the, in the story, the best market was Taiwan, which is, well, it's uh, Chinese people of Taiwan, and in Taiwan is very different from China, although they just departed uh, 50 years ago, and uh, they supposedly uh, come from the same source, but it's very different. So. I've done a lot of business in Taiwan. Can you, um, can you lower the microphone? Sure. Sure. I, I've done a lot of business in, in Taiwan and in China. Um, in the last six, seven years, eight years, uh, when we moved, I moved to uh, solar industry. And the biggest market, of course, in solar is China, both in, uh, in uh, producing solar cells and also in installing solar cells. Uh, so. China is the main market for us, so we have to work with it. Uh, so we work with China in, in three aspects, as you um, just mentioned before. One, it's the customer. Two, it's the uh, um, market, uh, for that matter, market for the products we help to manufacture, and investment, because of that. Um, and, and the difficult part, I mean, working with uh, Chinese customers, uh, my colleagues can tell, I can tell some stories as well. We're working only with very big companies, not small, not like 100 or 500 companies, but uh, five to 10 companies in China, each one is uh, over a billion dollar company. And these are the companies we work with, and it's a challenge and it's different working with American customers or Taiwanese or Japanese or European that uh, uh, we have done throughout the years. 
Uh, but on the investment side, this is a more interesting experience, as uh, you asked. Um, the only way to get investment from our, for what we do, is to, almost only, is to get it from China. And the main reason is because everything in solar is happening in China, both production and installation. So American VC will not invest in, in solar because they don't know the market, they don't understand it. Chinese will, and they potentially are interested. However, the main focus of Chinese investors, and not only in solar, and generally speaking, they want to bring technology to China. They don't want to buy things from Israel. They want to bring the technology to China. Um, I had numerous occasions talking to Chinese VCs. Half of them, if not 80% are some kind of government-backed VCs. They're not private VCs, almost no, except for the big ones that come from the US as well. Um, and their main focus, as they say, we need to make our GDP grow. GDP, the national product in China. So it's very difficult to get investment from China into Israel in order to sell system to China, in order to sell system to help the Chinese industry. Uh, still, it's extremely difficult. They want technology, they want IP, they don't want really, um, well, it's changing now, as we read in the paper, I did not experience NUVA and so on and so forth, that there are, there is money or cloud Bitoa, whatever it is, uh, there is money coming out of China, but very difficult and a very slow flow of that. Main, main, main focus of them is to bring technology to China. So for us, you, you were mentioning that the main concern about uh, growing the GDP. And uh, okay, we well know that the high levels of GDP that uh, growth that uh, China had every year, and now we're facing a different situation. We saw it in the uh, stock market, and we saw it in the change of the government plans. Does it change the, the, way, the, the, the fact that China today is not solely concentrated on GDP growth? They have other concerns, and on some points they're even cooling down the system, cooling down the market. Does it have to change the way that we Israeli approach Chinese market once we look for joint ventures or uh, investments? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. The fact that the GDP is in China is declining is something they want to fight with. They want to keep the growth, and so they will not give up on that. I'm working with another startup company and that also trying to do something in, with China and it's everything is always... The second question is, when will you move manufacturing to China? Uh, and I'm not talking about the issues that come up as well, are IP. And the Chinese people tell you, aren't you concerned? We are going to copy you. Um, they're not, they say it up front. It's not just that. And like the common practice, they know that Chinese will copy everything and you lose the business. They say it, the investors. And aren't you concerned about the IP being stolen by us Chinese? Uh, so everything is on the table in that respect. But they don't. We succeeded. We raised uh, one investment from a Chinese fund. And uh, the second fund is very close. Uh, we are talking, you hear in another session about technology uh, going to China <coughs> from Dan Shaham, where we are talking to someone who Danny is working with, uh, that we may get but it's uh, uh, investment from China to Israel. We are okay. not giving up. Okay. We are not giving up. We are going to produce systems in Israel and sell them to China. Okay. We, let, let's hear what uh, Shlomo has to say about it. Uh, from your experience, talking about things that uh, are changing in China. If things are changing in China, what do you see? Do you see winds of change? And in what sense, if you do? I think there are changes. Uh, there are a lot of Western people who are coming to China and Chinese people are coming to the West world. But still, the culture is the same and you need to know and to adhere to this culture. And 
for my opinion, to, to deal with the Chinese, you need to, to have at least two main things. One is to be friendly with them. It's not enough that you are dealing with them. I can give you a nice example. We, were, we went to Nanjing to deal, to negotiate with the, the engineering department of Peking University about one project. We negotiated all the day, afterwards, you know, as usual, they took us to dinner, also things were going slowly, but after the dinner, they took us to a tour in the Nanjing uh, Center, and there was a small museum there, and uh, when they started to show us, our manager, she told them about who was the governor and all the history of Nanjing, after that moment, all, everything went <laughs> very well because they understood that she knows the culture, that she knows how what the, the Chinese wants. That's one thing. From the other side, uh, from another uh, negotiation, we deal with another company that uh, <coughs> we need to offer them some uh, data and information for their systems, and we. Uh, let's say, offer them something more uh, complicated with many opportunities and things like that. But they said, OK, let's start with something very simple. We need it to work as soon as, soon as possible. We don't have one or two years to wait for the product. We need it now. So let's do it simpler. And I think that's also a way to look at it, that they want the product now and uh, not in the future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have been signaled that uh, our time is getting short. Uh, so, uh, Victor, you also, do you see things that uh, are changing? Do you see any new trends in China that uh, a businessman or a manager coming there has to take into consideration? Well, uh, first of all, I think the biggest change is the attitude towards Israel. Um, I think in the last uh, couple of years, literally, there was a drastic change. And there were some books published in Chinese about Israel. And uh, you know, we get, uh, during trade shows, people come to us and say, Oh, Israel, you're the biggest Jewish country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, by the way. Right. Well, uh, and we say, Oh, yeah, you know, uh, Israel and China together. Yeah, twenty percent of the world. Right? So, <laughs> Which is true also. <laughs> this also is true. So uh, yeah, I think there is much uh, more openness towards Israel. Uh, Israeli technology is sort of famous, mm -hmm. and we get a uh, lot of uh, good responses uh, just being from Israel. Uh, one other thing I, w I wanted to point out, a cultural thing. And really uh, shortly, because we are getting into the last seconds. Uh, yeah, they don't quite believe in slideware. You know, a lot of companies come there with slides and stories. They want to see things work. So in my uh, current company, we designed a universal remote, and I maybe would like to show you how we do it. We go to a meeting with the VC, and we say, okay, we have universal remote in the cell phone. Well, let's see what we can control here. Ah. Here's a projector. So we say, OK, <laughs> what kind of projector? NEC. Well, let's see. We, I defined here on my universal remote NEC projector. And, um, and what was the reaction of the Chinese to that? You see, I'm controlling now this NEC projector in real time. Okay, okay. I can turn it off. But Victor, I we have, it, right? Victor. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to conclude. Uh, this is, you can turn your mic off. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a typical entrepreneurial panel where they're very excited about their own products, right, and want to show them to everybody. So this is, this is a wonderful uh, tech chat with our entrepreneurs. Let's give them a round of applause, please.